Yes. So he did not know how to swim. As a result, he panicked. He tried his best to come to the surface of the water. And whatever he did, try to think, you know, what he thought was the right way, it did, lend, you know, end up uh, in uh, his losing consciousness. It tired him, it exhausted him. When he talks that he was not able to breathe, when he says that his legs, they became rigid and he, had, he was paralyzed with fear. So it was because of the panic, his response to the situation. It was quite natural. Yes, and it is there. It is said that our body is meant to float, right? So you should just let uh, your body float. So it's easier said than done. But if you are in such a situation, you want to come out of the water as soon as you can. Yeah, but he missed out on these little things. So very right. Absolutely right, uh, Sanvinder. And I really have a lot of, uh, you know, like, yes, uh, admiration for people who have learned to swim. And uh, so do take this uh, very seriously. So it's very important. We really don't understand how important it is. But yes, so we should have this as, uh, I would say, as a very important uh, life skill. Yes, Sanvinder, you have to be very, very clear. You have to be focused. Okay, that I, I have to save it myself. And panicking and just, you know, thrashing your arms and legs about it is going to create an even more dangerous situation for you. And this is what happened to the young boy. So he's unconscious. He sees that oblivion around. What is oblivion? He's not aware of his surrounding. He's not aware of what is happening. And right now he is there, experienced that terror. Might not come to the surface of the water, might not be able to breathe. No one is going to come to save him. He's tried all his best, you know, trying to reach out for the rope or a ladder or even the water wings, which he thought would be there near around, but he could not find any of them. As a result, he exhausted himself. Yes, and uh, was not able to you know, like uh, save on the oxygen that he had and he reached towards the bottom of the pool, right? So he did come towards the surface, but he thought that let me try to catch hold of something. But he was unable to do that. And as a result, what happened? He's become unconscious, okay? So let's see what happens. And uh, naturally he's going to come very, what, scarred because of this experience. It's going to have a very, bad uh, impact on him as a child and how it is uh, going to impair his proper functioning. So when you've had such a near death experience, you've had such a scary experience, it's going to take a long time for you to get to normal. And naturally, yes, uh, you have to be a very brave person to overcome your fears, to overcome your phobias, right? So what has happened here? I crossed to oblivion and the curtain of life fell. He thought everything is over. The curtain of life fell. He's there, he's gone into unconsciousness. He's become, he's not aware, right? He's just plunged into this darkness and it seems as if life is over. The next I remember, I was lying on my stomach beside the pool vomiting. So when he came to his senses, he was near the pool and he was vomiting. The chap that threw me in was saying, but I was only fooling. Someone said, the kid nearly died. We are right now. Let's carry him to the locker room. And see, your uh, idea of uh, behavior, you know, like bullying someone, teasing someone, it might uh, end up in someone losing his life. So the big boy who threw him up in the water, he just did it as fun. He thought, let me just have uh, fun with this little boy. And he's a skinny boy and he's scared. And does uh, like, uh, so because he was big and strong, he knew how to swim. He thought that he could dominate over these little ones. So he just picked that boy and threw him in the water. And this is what happened. Poor thing had a very scary experience. But I was only fooling. Someone said the kid nearly died. Be all right now. Let's carry him to the locker room. Several hours later, I walked home. I was weak and trembling. I shook and cried when I lay on my bed. Now he's remembering that experience and uh, what a shock for him. I couldn't eat that night. For days, a haunting fear was in my heart. 
the slightest exertion upset me, making me wobbly in the knees and sick to my stomach. So he's gone through this terrible experience. He's almost experienced death and he's having difficulty in walking and he's been trembling, he's shaking, he's so scared. And uh, he was absolutely, you know, like what, sick to his stomach. He's wobbly in the knees, wobbly, he's shaking in the knees. I never went back to the pool. I feared water. I avoided it whenever I could. So what happened as a result of that misadventure, as a result of that incident, he never went back. He gave up on swimming. He's so scared. And he avoided going near the water whenever he could. A few years later, when I came to know the waters of the Cascades, I wanted to get into them. And whenever I did, whether I was wading the Teton or bumping river or bathing in warm lake off the goat rocks, the terror that had seized me in the pool would come back. So he heard about the waters of the Cascades, about this lake, this river. He heard about this place. He wanted to go there. And when he did, whether I was wading the Teton, so whether he was wading in the river or uh, he was just bathing in the waters, what happened? That fear, that terror, he remembered what had happened to him so many years ago and that fear would catch hold of him and he would not enjoy that moment. What would happen? My legs would become paralyzed. I see horror would grab my heart. Again, that same experience is going to happen to me. I'd be down in the water, unable to breathe, paralyzed, right, with fear. This handicap stayed with me as the years rolled by. This handicap. Why does the writer call it a handicap? When we think of handicap, what comes to our mind? Yes? When we think of a handicap, what comes to our mind? Come on, give me an answer. So what comes to our mind when we think of a handicap? The disability? Yeah, unable to do any work proper, some like, Something is there coming in your way, not allowing you to function properly. So we relate it with a disability. Why does he call this a handicap? The sphere of water. Why does he call it a handicap? Yes? So why does he call it a handicap? Because it did not allow him to enjoy any water related activity because it disabled him. Yes, absolutely correct. Because he did not enjoy any of the activities he went for and he avoided, like as soon as he was in the water where he was trying to walk, you know, wading there or paddling in the water, that fear would come. And uh, he felt that no, he could not go any further. And he felt that now that fear is going to come again or that experience that he had it would happen again. So he was paralyzed. He was unable to enjoy these activities. So handicap here, it is anything which does not allow us to function properly. It's not a necessarily a physical disability, but it can be here also. If an experience, right? That does not allow you to function normally. It could be any experience that created a fear in your mind. So here he does call it a, handicap. In canoes on main lakes, fishing for landlocked salmon. So whether it was where he was going in the canoes or whether it was fishing, bass fishing in New Hampshire, trout fishing on the Deschutes and Metolius in Oregon, fishing for salmon on the Columbia and Bumping Lake in the Cascades, wherever I went. So he tried so many times. It's not that he was not making efforts. Yes, he was going uh, wherever he could uh, participate in the water activities, but that fear did not allow him to enjoy or participate in that activity. Wherever I went, the haunting fear of the water followed me. It ruined my fishing trips, deprived me of the joy of canoeing, boating, and swimming. So that, that fear ruined all his trips. Right? So he wanted to go canoeing, he wanted to go boating, he wanted to swim, but he could not because that incident, it came back to his mind again, that fear came to his mind. 
I used every way I knew to overcome this fear, but it held me firmly in its grip. So he's trying, you know, to come out of it. He's trying to go near the water. He's trying to participate. He wants to be a part of all those activities, but that fear is not letting him function normally. Finally, one October, I decided to get an instructor and learn to swim. So he said, okay, let me start again. How did this whole incident begin? How did it happen in the swimming pool? Right? So he's gone back and uh, after many years, he's decided, now let me learn how to swim. I went to a pool and practiced five days a week, an hour each day. The instructor put a belt around me. A rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable. So what was the arrangement like? So the instructor had put a belt around him. Right? There was a rope attached to the belt and there was a pulley over there, over the pool, through the overhead cable. And uh, the instructor would stand at one end, right, holding the rope, and he would swim from one end to the other. Okay? So very basic there, just to make him familiar with the length of the pool. He held on to the end of the rope and he went back and forth, back and forth, across the pool, hour after hour, day after day, week after week. On each trip across the pool, a bit of the panic seized me. Each time the instructor relaxed his hold on the rope and I went under, some of the old terror returned and my legs froze. It was three months before the tension began to slack. Then he taught me to put my face underwater and exhale and to raise my nose and inhale. I repeated the exercise hundreds of times. Bit by bit, I shed part of the panic that seized me when my head went under water. Now here, what did the instructor do? How did the instructor teach him to swim? How was he taught how to swim? So he's taken one very important decision. I'm going to go to the swimming pool and I'm going to overcome this fear and I will learn how to swim. So what did the instructor do? The instructor, like he wore a belt around him and there was a rope and through the pulley that rope went and the instructor held on. And so, like, they kept on going back and forth along, uh, you know, across the length and breadth of the pool. And was he able to overcome his fear? No. There were times when the terror would come back and his legs froze and he was scared once again. So that fear had not gone completely. Then what else did the instructor teach him? How to breathe, right? How to inhale and exhale. When to inhale? When he was outside and exhale under, or is it the other way around? Yes. So he was taught how to breathe also, right? How to inhale and exhale. But that fear was still there. So he's still, you know, like, yeah, he's become a swimmer. Knows now that how to swim, right? He knows uh, the techniques of breathing. Knows how to move his arms and leg. Will he be able to overcome this fear? You are there, right? When you learn how to drive, you whether you were self-taught, many of you are, you have your elders, your brother, sister, father teaching you, or you go to the instructor. So he's going to tell you that this is it, right? He's going to tell you the theory of it. And of course, yes, so when you are on the road, when you are there driving along, you feel safe because he's going to save you in case anything goes wrong. But the real practice comes when you are on the road on your own. Right? How confident are you? How brave are you? Will you be able to overcome your fear? How do you react, right, in various situations? That is the real test. So this boy, he did learn swimming. He did become a swimmer, part by part, whatever we know, you know, like whatever is required to become a good swimmer, right? So about breathing here, moving arms and legs, and yes, so having that strength, main is that strength, you should not tire out when you are there swimming along the length of the pool. So he was able to learn all that, but was he able to overcome the fear of his, that he had, that was the fear of water, right? So that only he will have to, how, how do you think he's going to overcome it? When he swims alone? Right. And when he knows it now, whatever I'm going to do, I will have to save myself. Will that fear come back? Will he overcome that fear? 